Travis Scott, aka Jacques Saumon Webster II, has had four number one hits and even created his own festival, Astro World Fest, which unfortunately had a pretty dark twist in its tale. But there might be a hidden creative side to this successful rapper that you don't know about. You see, Travis isn't just a master when it comes to hip hop and trap music. Now, he gave an interview for the Pin Up magazine. An interview that turned out to be very telling about a somewhat hidden creative side to this rapper. So in the interview, they used photoshopped imagery of Travis in positions that resemble the alphabet. And for each letter, he spoke about a topic close to his heart or something which maybe just meant a lot to his life. And if we scroll down and look at G, we find something very interesting to us creatives. Graphic design. It's one of my true passions. A lot goes into graphic design. You usually gravitate to what matches how you feel or what represents your personality. Colors, artwork, it all plays a part. So you can see he's already really aware of emotions and visuals and how they play as part of a brand. And actually he goes on to say this. Among my favorite American logos are Campbell's Soup, Brillo and Frenchie's Chicken, which is a restaurant in Houston. Looking at the three logo designs he mentioned, we can see how they have a very bold graphic and even a retro vibe to them. This will become more important later when we look into his actual merch design and his brand identity and how that plays into a successful business. And you'll be shocked by some of the money generated by his graphic design approach and style. Crucially, however, there are two more letters on this pin-up article that relate importantly back to Travis's personality. Those are B, which is for brutalism, and P, which stands for postmodernism. These two styles, they heavily influence Travis into being the creative designer he is today. Now, if you look at some of the merch and perhaps his music videos, could you put his graphic design style into one single sentence? How would you best describe it? Well, it uses bold colors, dynamic and experimental typography, and surreal imagery. But importantly, he blends all of this with neo-brutalism and pop culture to really get people's attention and captivation. It's just super, super clever. But take a look at this fan-made design. They said that they were trying to hit the brutalism angle, but to me, it kind of has no character, no depth, and it just falls flat. And of course, no offense to this person and their design. It's not actually a bad design as such, it just fails to capture the true, pure essence of what we've been talking about in today's video. But if you take a look at the Utopia album covers, which are meant to ironically point to how modern day society is far from a utopia, you get a sense of the raw character and depth in them. Where the fan-made design could have easily just been downloaded from Freepik, the actual Travis designs are truly original. For example, the pop cultural references of a zombie, but interestingly, the zombies clutching money to suggest that we have become zombies due to the nature of modern day society. Travis apparently had a very hands-on role in the creation of his album covers, but importantly, the stunning 112-page design that he released. Travis oversaw the creative direction of the design, which consisted of 12 visual artists and contributors, where Travis managed the editing and graphic design aspects of the entire process. Now the juicy stuff. It's that place where Travis's unrefined, pure style really does shine through, and that is his merch. And get this. From research, I found that Travis Scott's Utopia tour generated over $1 million in merch sales alone. Wait for it. That is $1 million per night at venues in Dallas and Denver. Insane numbers, yes. But why is that? His design style plays right into today's broken society and how people resent it. His graphic design purposely looks edgy, jagged, and non-conformist. It gives people who feel disillusioned with society and who listen to his music a way to buy into that identity and that feeling. His merch looks a lot like anti-design in some respects, but it's all by design and intentional, ingeniously so. Like I always say on this channel, know your target audience and then serve them what they want with a side order of emotion to really hit home the message. In his own words, he likes postmodernism because it allows him to revisit the past in a new way. The imagery and the styles on his merch do hit this home. We see a lot of 90s clip art style graphics and even retro McDonald's imagery as well. Nostalgia is a hell of a drug and it really does sell well. 
of course, he has a huge following, so it is easier to sell things and to make money that way. But he has built his brand identity up over time. He didn't just appear one day by magic. He has a very unique and a very clever art direction around his brand. And let's now look at some more fan-made designs to see if they've managed to fully capture this brand essence. Here's an interesting design by Alex Loki. The premise of this fan-made design is to build a mock website that shows you what you would get with the Travis Scott meal at McDonald's. Now, right out of the gate, we have a grayscale imagery section of Travis, and with that, a grainy texture that covers pretty much everything. This gives us some character and also some depth. But actually, if you look closely, that's contrasted with a font and color combination that does resemble McDonald's branding pretty well. Also, you gotta love the hand-drawn elements that fit so well with Travis's brand identity. The website design is neatly laid out to begin with, and the designer has thought about the color scheme really well to keep in line with McDonald's, but also with Travis Scott's brand as well. Also, we see lots of use of that small model that Travis has used with the McDonald's collab. This image here is cool because it utilizes postmodernism with retro colors and imagery of the old McDonald's branding, but that's contrasted with Travis's Ferrari. Again, Travis talking about making something new from something old. But yeah, we continue to see the use of that model throughout the entire design. And at the bottom here, the layout gets a bit less conformist and more like Travis's merchandise. I love the logo play here as well, but I'm not sure if McDonald's will be cool with this on an actual project in real life. But yeah, this design is neat and it does play into both Travis's and McDonald's branding systems. So I give this a solid 8 out of 10. Moving on, this fan-made design is by Nick Arley from the Philippines. And what a design this is. It's for the Utopia album, and as is typical with Travis's actual Utopia artwork, it manages to convey a sort of more dystopian feel. I love the grainy texture over the entire design, and also the hand-drawn elements that give you a sense of some character and some depth. Now, Travis was actually meant to perform at the Pyramids of Giza, but it was cancelled, and I think that's why the design has added them into this design. It's a great composition, and it's a solid design, but I don't quite think it's fully captured the essence of what Travis's brand envisions and his work actually shows. So I'm going to give this one a strong 7 out of 10. The third design is by Ricardo Jr. And it aims to push the collab Travis had with Nike. Here's another quick down low on why Travis's brand is so successful. So he chooses his collabs and marketing tools really, really carefully. Think about how Travis Scott did a collab with McDonald's on that basketball. A basketball is linked to Nike sneakers, which are also somewhat linked back to hip hop. The brands and the areas he chooses to put himself in kind of bleed into each other. So he knows his target audience will like B and C if they like A. It's a pretty clever approach. But anyway, I digress. On this design here, I like how Scott is in italic and that contrasts how Travis isn't. It's really non-conformist in appearance and it does work well. The composition and the layout is neat. A little too neat for a design trying to hit up Travis's style. But I do love the translucent Nike swoosh right here. On a design about a collab between Travis and Nike, you'd expect to see a sneaker somewhere at least, so that's a bit of a shame. And I think again, this design doesn't really get the brand essence of Travis Scott, even though it's a good design technically. So here, I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. But what do you think about these fan-made designs? And by now, you should have a super strong feel and understanding of Travis's brand system and his creativity as a visionary and perhaps a graphic designer. But if you want to check out if Kanye West is actually a better graphic designer than you, just click the video on the screen. But until next time, guys, design your future today. Peace.